always fresh every day you're watching fast lane daily dude i spent almost a hundred bucks gassing up my 87 targa yesterday four dollars thirty cents a gallon it was insane hundred really hundred bucks i mean thank god that car dude, gets almost I, I, 28 miles to the gallon this, seriously dude this summer we're going to be seeing five dollars a gallon i think Dude, I think it's going to be six within a year and a half. It's going to be, it's going to be unfortunate, really and, bad. And the funny thing is that's still better off than all of Europe. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe we'll see a better, smaller, lighter cars with diesel engines, hybrid diesels, whatever. Dude, we're so behind in the U.S. And that brings me to 17-mile drive here on the Monterey Peninsula in California. Now, this is the 30th day of the Mercedes F-Cell World Drive, a tour that started in Stuttgart, drove across Europe, through the US and we'll go to Australia, China, Kazakhstan, Russia, and back to Stuttgart. The point, to prove hydrogen technology to the world. Now hydrogen technology isn't new to the world, and no, I'm not just referencing thermonuclear weapons, but that is a good place to start and help you recognize the power and potential of the element that has atomic number one. So why introduce it as a fuel source for vehicles? How about the fact that hydrogen constitutes nearly two thirds of the mass of the known universe? Now this is the Mercedes B-Class, one of three driving around the world with the third generation F-Cell platform. Now there are actually 200 of these up for lease right now in Germany, but come in two years, Mercedes is gonna release the fourth generation F-Cell platform, one they hope will be smaller, lighter, more efficient, and sold in a higher volume. Now I'm going to be frank here, driving the F-Cell B-Class for three days up the California coast was actually somewhat boring, except of course for the beautiful landscape. The car drives and feels like any other car in its class, but since the hydrogen F-Cell charges batteries, which in turn powers electric motors, the car has a lot of torque. Now no tricked out F1 curves here, if you brake, energy is lost in the form of heat off the rotors, but if you just let off the gas, the engine will recover some energy and put it back into the batteries. The range on about three and a half kilograms of hydrogen, about 150 to 200 miles, and that is not eco-friendly driving. But even with new technology that looks perfect on paper, the biggest challenge is public awareness. These F-Cell prototypes are a very expensive bet for Mercedes, and proving their worth to an audience of Americans, 12% of them who claim they speak American and not English on the census, is a fairly difficult task. But what it really comes down to is this, which came first, the chicken or the egg? That said, there are only a handful of public hydrogen fueling stations in the United States, most of which are in California. So why should a company like Mercedes invest so much into the F-Cell program when the general public wouldn't think twice about purchasing a vehicle which they won't be able to fill? It's a gamble, no one's denying that, but we're at a point in our existence where someone needs to take a stand. The big corporation like Daimler and Mercedes makes this push and commits to driving around the world to prove the technology works in any condition safely, then isn't that enough leverage? All right, Jeff, a first question I'm going to ask you is not whether the car was fun to drive, because I know the answer. Dude, how, do you, how the hell do you refuel this thing? Well, in California, I did the California Lake, there were hydrogen fueling stations. Out of anywhere in the world, California has the oldest and the longest running hydrogen fueling stations. But for the rest of the world, Mercedes actually enlisted a fleet of uh, hydrogen uh, tankers that would follow the convoy of cars and we would stop and refuel on the side of the road. That's pretty much how it worked. So obviously, but the regular consumer is not going to have trucks following them around. They have to go to stations. Uh, no, 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 and, no. But you got to keep in mind, this is just a proof of concept to show that the technology does work in any condition. This is not, you know, as I said in the video, it comes down to the supply chain. There is no supply chain yet outside of Germany and California. And they're also probably 10 years and billions of dollars behind the infrastructure, say, for electric cars. And you don't even have electric refueling stations uh, ubiquitous enough to make them useful. I mean, Nissan Leaf owners are having a lot of problems with that. Yeah, well, th that's, you know, the point of what this, this video should be about is that there is not one solution to the problems we have for alternative energy. I think there are several solutions. Uh, and, and everyone I've interviewed has said the same thing, you know, there are different reasons you go with different forms. Diesels for longer trips, and there is already a supply chain for diesel. Audi took that bet because, uh, you know, there is plenty of diesel throughout this country. 
you know, hybrids still work. Plug-in hybrids are getting there. There are plug-in stations throughout the country, more in the ur bigger well, urban areas. Wait, I got to stop um, you right and, there. I know people hate when I interrupt, yeah. but you, you raise a really interesting question. So, you know, are you suggesting that actually we may see, you know, two to three different technologies in the future come to maturity, each used for different things? So commuters will ha drive electric cars or plug-ins, uh, you know, or, or hydrogens. Long-distance, you know, vehicles will do turbo diesel hybrid plug-ins? I mean, is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think there's going to be all types of new things that we're going to see in the coming decade. I think hydrogen is more long-term than what we have been, uh, I've been leading on to speak of. You're not going to see that many hydrogen cars in two years when Mercedes introduces it. There, well, I think it's going to be 10 will years. Be fleets. Well, no, they're, they're going to introduce the F-cell to the public in two years. That's for fact. The problem is the supply chain. As I keep saying, only major cities will have these hydrogen fueling depots. Um, I think once those people start buying it and the influence starts happening, it's going to take a decade before we start. You're going to be able to drive a hydrogen vehicle coast to coast. All right, let me. Let, I got to stop you again, Matt, because you became like I used to be. I love to talk. Now you and you got a lot of information to share. But uh, here's a question, okay? BMW came out with a hydrogen seven a couple of years ago. They drove that around, and we yep. haven't heard much about that since. Now they're coming out with all these, you know, i models. You know, between. You know, Audi is focused on, on TDI, and we have yet to really hear from them like their big statement on what the next generation technology is. Put this in perspective. Toyota bet big 10, 15 years ago on developing the, you know, the hybrid powertrain for the Prius. Now they've moved into yes. plug-in technology. Yes. Germany, I mean, I, I, it, it, would seem to be, it would seem to me that the German manufacturers are generally the most aggressive in cutting edge. And and furthest thinking, but they didn't bet correctly on the way Toyota did. Today, you've got Audi, Mercedes, and uh, BMW, and you've got Porsche, okay? Among mm -hmm. these manufacturers, who do you think is going to win this bet, come to market first with vehicles uh, in you know, markets I, where there'll be infrastructure? Next year, they're all going to win. This is my prediction. Mercedes, uh, Mercedes says the F-cell in two years. So in two years, they're all going to win. Mercedes, Mercedes says the F-cell. Audi has diesel already. They're going to have the e-tron, the fully electric sports car. BMW? BMW is going to focus on new materials to make their cars stronger and lighter, which, in fact, will make cars more efficient. The i-brand? That, that brand has more patents on it than any other car company right now because of the carbon fiber and the, the titanium woven plastics that they are developing right now. I think it's a, combina a combination of everything that's coming out next year that we're really going to start seeing the strength of the German car industry. And are you suggesting then the corollary is that they're going to leave, say, the American manufacturers behind because they're playing catch-up? Well, no, I think, and we're start, we saw this, we're seeing this now with Ford, um, they're, they're partnering up with Japanese hybrid uh, suppliers. Uh, they're taking the technology that Toyota has had for quite a few years. So I don't think that we're going to see Americans fall back. I think that they're just adopting stuff that's already working uh, in the Japanese market, which will help them in the next five years. But I think the Germans are thinking 10 years ahead, 15 years ahead. And I think that's where they're going to really dominate the industry in a decade. That's interesting because if you, know, if you look at the development cycles, some manufacturers are focused on kind of midterm solutions. I mean, I, yes. per, I took heat for suggesting that turbo diesel hybrids made sense uh, two years ago, but now you hear manufacturers talking about them. It's, it would seem to me that whoever is focusing on midterm solutions is going to win big in the next, say, two to three years. If you're right, then the German companies may have a resurgence down the road. We need to wrap mm -hmm. this because we're running a little long. Uh, you're right, but you're right. Can I bring up the car that I want to cover soon? Uh, sure. What, what is the it? The only car... Cooler than a Di Tommaso Pantera, American powered, Italian designed. I want to cover that car, and that car is the Iso Grifo. And if you haven't heard of it, it's spelled I S S O space G R I F F O. Look it up Wikipedia. This car is awesome. That's for another time. Okay, if you wanna, if you wanna do that, um, you gotta find the car. I'm not looking for one. I'll find one in two <laughs> weeks. I promise, JF. I uh, hope you enjoyed that drive. I'm glad I was not with you, but that's not, we, we, let's not get into that. Bye, Alex. Take care, man. Bye.